this project was the, the how we can make a robot can ride a motorcycle to compete with the world class the professional riders by lap time. And then the, the period itself is only three years. We started from scratch and to be the same level with Valentin Rossi, is a world famous professional rider. It's really, really challenging. But uh, otherwise, that project has no meaning because we want to do the uh, Moonshot project. Then that's why the, uh, the very ambitious and uh, great objectives is important, mandatory. So, the, but the, to proceed that kind of project, we looked for some partner who has the same vision and the uh, same skill set. Then we could find the SRI International as a joint partner for this project. And uh, when uh, we started this project, nobody has answer. Nobody has answer. So uh, we tried to do kind of lean startup the approach. Then in the end of the phase one, is the first year, that we could get uh, this robot can ride a motorcycle autonomously and can make the uh, low speed slalom. So the, we continue to collaboration, collaborate the, with SRI for the coming the phase two and three. The version one motobot was an effective test bed for developing the motobot features and capabilities. But in order to go faster, it needed to be re-envisioned as a fully optimized system. Each element of the system was designed to meet or exceed Valentino Rossi's performance. Uh, starting with the carbon fiber shell, uh, it's a structure that's lightweight. It results in a total system weight of only 45 kilograms. The steering system incorporates a high power motor and a cycloidal drive. The cycloidal drive, it's compact, it's efficient, and it enables Motobot to output over 200 newton meters of torque to the steering column. The rear brake is controlled by a twisted string actuator. Uh, twisted string actuators provide efficient gear reduction without the extra width and bulk that's needed for a traditional gearbox. The front brake actuator uses a tapering spiral pulley on the output of the motor. This creates an actuator with a continuously increasing gear ratio. Using this mechanism, motor position and brake pressure on the motorcycle have a linear relationship. This linear relationship allows for a precise control of the brake pressure. Upon achieving the target lap time, the first challenge was to have Motobot autonomously follow the target path. Motobot decides by itself how it follows the target path. Since Motobot runs autonomously at the range of speed from 15 kph to 200 kph, it was a big challenge for us to make it possible for Motobot to follow the target path stably over such a wide speed range. We developed the passporting control logic by running countless rounds of the simulation as well as actual running tests. In addition to this, uh, in order to follow the target path, it is necessary for Motobot to recognize its current position precisely. We developed the algorithm to estimate the position with an accuracy of 2.5 cm using various sensors such as IMU in addition to the GPS. Once Motobot was able to follow the target path, the second challenge was to maximize the speed while maintaining the stability. This involved dynamically controlling the acceleration opening angle, gear shift, and braking, while taking factors such as air resistance and engine brake into account. In order for Motobot to run stably over such a wide speed range, there are many challenges to overcome. We developed the speed control logic by referring to the riding data and advice from the professional rider, as well as simulation and actual running tests. Unlike human beings, another key feature of Motobot is its ability to operate multiple actuators, individually and with precision. For example, when running on a straight and then needing to bank to enter a corner, a human would throttle down a begin braking and then grab the clutch lever. At around the same time, they need to shift down, release the clutch lever, start to bank the vehicle, and gradually open the throttle while also braking to control the speed to complete the cornering. This all happens instantly. Without training, 
focusing 100% on each of these multiple actions is difficult for humans. However, Motobot can focus 100% on each of them and operate these actions in about 0.6 seconds. Through the aggregation of these elements, by providing only a target line and speed, Motobot can run autonomously. Also, given the unique approach of robots, we may come to see dramatic leaps in evolution. During the development, we must pay attention not to allow the bike to fall over, even at low speeds. For this reason, the simulation test before the track test is very important. First of all, at step one, a virtual simulation is performed. This is a method to combine the motorbot's main control with vehicle simulation software. Each engineer can do various tests in parallel without using the actual motorbot or bike. Next, at step two, a hybrid simulation is performed. The actual motorbot is placed on the R1 in the lab and both are connected to a special system tool to do a simulation with the real hardware operating. By emulating some sensor information, which can be obtained only when the bike is running, Motorbot operates the R1 as if it were running on the actual track. If step two completes without any problems, at step three, we do the actual track test. In the real world, we need to modify the control method or validate some control parameters considering environmental factors such as road surface conditions. If we meet unexpected behaviors such as strong steering oscillation, we need to perform more complex control. The updated control will be used in step one and two next time. At the same time, the findings from track tests are used to improve the reproducibility of the simulation. This three-step evaluation was repeated many times. This method was used to increase the controllability and speed of development in addition to minimizing the risk of crashes. And it's how we could make the high-speed runs on the track possible. We learned a lot of things from the, this project, and then uh, we are very, very surprised that how human is great for the cornering and then lighting itself. Very sensitive, very intuitive, very complicated. They can do all of those things very easily. And then that means that we have so many, so big potential to improve our motorbot to be a real human level in the future. So our project, our challenge will be continued. I wanted to create moonshot that would transmit Yamaha's spirit and technical capabilities, both within and outside the company. And I wanted the goal to be very challenging, one that no one has ever tried before. And the field is a prayerful mind. It can be said that this itself is a character of Yamaha. In other words, it is based on technical insight and at the same time, cherishes the inspiration or intuition that shines through after much deliberation. At Yamaha, the spirit of challenge is part of our DNA. Participation in the MotoGP is considered one such example of this, where high technology and talents are fostered through severe competition against rivals. The approach with Motorbot is basically the same. One difference is that this time, Yamaha has, by itself, determined the competitor for their challenge, Valentino Rossi. The Motorboat project is a challenge in the real world, where the situation changes every moment, a challenge to use real hardware within the natural environment, an extremely high target to achieve. But this is why I feel that we are able to learn so much. Although Motorbot could not surpass Valentino Rossi this time, it has proved that robots are capable of maneuvering an unmodified motorcycle autonomously on the racetrack 
at extremely high speeds. Our challenge has just begun, as well as the Morobot. Please look forward to other exciting projects to come. And the kind of world we are able to create using the various technologies that will be realized through Yamaha's one-of-a-kind research.